U.S. property. There it is right there. So this thing was certainly, you know, driven for a period of time on a naval base. And uh, we've got to find out power plant here, what's in the doghouse. Hey, Steve and Yanni here doing the junkyard crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts. In the 1970s, Ford Econline vans became one of America's most popular family vehicles. Uh, 1975 was the first year for the third generation Econline, which was the first to have an actual body on frame construction. Basically a pickup truck frame with a van on top. This one here we featured a little while ago, there'll be a link to this video. This is a club wagon chateau. This was as luxurious as it got. Uh, carpeted inside, headliner, all that sort of thing. By contrast, this is the opposite end of the scale. We know that because we see U.S. Navy on this one. In addition to the Navy gray paint, this was a government property, Navy fleet van. And as a result, these are strictly built to a price with very austere configuration inside. Now, this is not a club wagon. It's not for people. This one was built for hauling things around. No seats in this one, but it is a window van. And yes, you could get windows on your cargo van if you chose to. Again, smart really for backing up at the Navy base and not hitting the destroyer or the uh, aircraft carrier parked behind you. We can see the Navy gray paint on every surface in this thing. In fact, even the sides are, are naked, so to speak. There's no fiberboard uh, paneling. And again, these things were built to a government contract. Ford bid on it, probably fighting against Chevrolet and Dodge, won the contract and sold Uncle Sam, uh, the Department of the Navy, a whole bunch of these vans. And again, these were built for strictly functionality. Uh, this one does have the sliding door on the passenger side. That was an extra cost option versus the, uh, the opening doors like we have on the back of this thing. But that's about the only option I can see on this thing. Let's keep poking around. Now this does have, again, there's a number on this one, and we can see it at the back. Uh, it says official use. Here it is right here. It says 9318793. Pay attention to that number. We'll get back to that in a second. But 93, uh, et cetera, et cetera, 93. So that will reappear in a moment. But let's make our way down to the side of this thing. And uh, it looks, speaking of side, it looks like this thing might have gone on its side, perhaps rolled up on the driver's side right here. It skidded down the road in some sort of a topsy-turvy scenario. That might have been one. entered its days. This glass probably broke. There's probably bits of this window on the side of the road someplace nearby here, uh, mixing in with the soil. But as we come down to the front, we'll see here, of course, the magic of the third gen Econoline was the fact that the engine bay was moved way forward so that you could walk between the front seats without any problem, get into the back area without any issues at all. And that was something that was started on the second gen Ford Econline, mid-68, but was fully finished here. And these, again, ride on a Ford pickup truck frame, modified to some degree, but these are the only uh, American vans with body on frame construction. Dodge and GM are all unitized. So these are actually a little stronger potentially. Now we do see here some neat stuff. Z-Bart, there we have it right there. That would of course be the, uh, the rust proofing, which is kind of controversial. If we look around the, the A pillar, the perimeter of that door frame, we'll see about six or seven little rubber or plastic circles. Those are holes that were drilled by the Z-Bart installer, and then they'd put their wand in there, spray some wax-like substance in there, and then plug them up. Well, some would say that by putting those holes right there, they created as much bare metal as they prevented rust. But again, Z-Bart was something apparently that Uncle Sam, your tax, tax dollars and mine, uh, paid to keep this thing from uh, rusting, uh, like it did anyway. But with that said, we also see the VIN on this thing, the sticker here, and again, 1981 was the year that they went from 13 to 17 digits. Uncle Sam mandated a standardized VIN. And on this one, we see that this is a six-cylinder vehicle, but uh, the transcode G means C6 automatic. A surprise, it's not a three-speed manual, but I guess they figured uh, the average sailor may or may not know how to drive a stick. And of course, we see axle 13. That's a 275 to 1 open 9-inch. So again, 275 gears, pretty economical, not an acceleration monster. But again, this is not meant to be a drag racer at all. And one thing, too, about the 1981 forward 17-digit VINs is that the mandate from the government was that there was to have no I's, no Q's, and no letter O's to prevent confusion with O's and zeros and ones, etc. So if you ever have a VIN, you will not find an I, a Q, or an O in it. Now, there's more to this thing. We can see on the left that little tag screwed to the door. That is very important. Down low, that metal tag. I'm going to walk around the side. And on any vehicle sold to 
the government, it becomes government property, and as a result has to have a nomenclature plate. And that thing right there tells us what we need to know. Now the VIN is up here. Uh, oh, actually right here it says uh, truck, van, wagon, four by two, make and model Ford Club Wagon E150. The VIN here, and that's a six owner VIN. Registration number, that 931870. Nine three. That's the number stenciled we saw on the back. And again, U.S. property. There it is, right there. So this thing was certainly, you know, driven for a period of time on a naval base. And uh, we got to find out power plant here. What's in the doghouse? Okay. Well, the engine is gone. There was a six cylinder. That would have been a 300 cubic inch six popper. And again, here's the C6 three speed automatic, but something weird here. Look at that radio delete. In fact, this entire faceplate right here is one piece. It's all cast together. It's not a filler. And that's kind of cool. When you didn't get a radio in your van, Ford gave you the logo Ford and a convenient one piece plastic plate. Now here's the thing in cargo vans like, like this, 64.6% .6 of all buyers went radio delete. In other words, uh, over half were built without a radio. Uh, with that said, passenger vans like this, 14.2% uh, were built without a radio. In other words, like 80% or 85% had a radio. So that's the difference between cargo vans, because the reality is, if you're moving carpeting or working for Uncle Sam, you don't want to have a radio crank and you want to be taking orders. Whereas if this was a passenger van, 85% of the time there would be a radio. But that's a pretty rare and bizarre piece right there. That's a radio delete plate for a Ford Econoline van. Let's go around to the front real quick. And again, the party trick on this third gen Econoline line is the hood and we see up here a very long snout right here and that is really what made these vans um, more truck-like but you got to remember you know this is the time before minivans there were no Aerostars no uh, Chrysler minivans those arrived in the early 80s so in the mid 1970s the, the van as a passenger mover as a family vehicle really took root to be replaced you know in the 80s by the minivan as fuel economy became more important but in the 60s passenger vans were kind of uncommon but you get into the 70s uh, it became far more common but this one here not a passenger van this one served the US Navy and you got to wonder if this thing maybe went off on a an aircraft carrier someplace on the deck and was traveled around the world and used maybe in ports, Japan, who knows where, and then brought back here, sold at auction. Somebody around here bought it, flipped it on its side, and it went up here at Burnson Auto Wrecking. But again, Uncle Sam, with our tax dollars, uh, has a tendency to buy vehicles like this. And again, no mag wheels, no uh, spiffy stuff, because again, they don't want to have the appearance of wasting our tax money. So a utilitarian, a utilitarian van like this thing right here, even with a radio delete, is uh, something you'd see at a naval base. But now it's sitting here at Burnson Auto Wrecking. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Bank's YouTube channel and come back tomorrow with, we'll have more Junkyard Crawl just for you.